It's spring break, baby. <laughs> Let's get into it. Woo. <laughs> I couldn't even manage a woo there. My my lips made the fucking shape of it, but nothing came out of my mouth. I think that is how tired I am. That's sort of all I've got. <laughs> that was it. That was like quite. Well, the... hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Yeah. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Hello, oh, beautiful dude. people. How's it going? This is the Show Some Love podcast. Um, mm-hmm. I'm Connor. And I'm Beck. And together we're here um, in your ear holes. Hello, Sean. How's it going? Hey, fuckers. What's hey. Up? Oh, hello, love. Well, we've got a big announcement. Um, Sean's having a baby, but we are also having a baby. Not an actual human one. <laughs> no. Just disclaimer, no. big disclaimer. We, we're currently, <laughs> Those days are gone. <laughs> we're currently um, giving birth to a fucking massive building in the city centre. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you're not, if you're listening and you're not watching, we, um, I mean, I haven't shaved, I haven't did my roots. My about... hair is faded, my fringe is long, yeah. my fuzzy bits are fuzzy. We are a wreck. <laughs> yeah. So, well, we're here to. Um, to give you life and to maybe make a bit more of a podcast hug this week. Mm-hmm. Well, I am also sounding a bit, a wee bit raspy, so sorry about that. I think it's just because we've been pulling like 12 hour days, like at least two or three a week for the last two or three weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we've not been really getting, we've always ended up working our days off for the last couple of weeks, which has been fairly stressful. Yeah. Um, you know, we go back in, uh, well, now we have our two wonderful employees started full time oh, as well great. as our lovely Beth. But we went in this week after our two days off and the, the, the pair of them just sort of look at us like, why do you, like, they didn't say it, but they're like, why do you two both kind of still look like shit, even though you've you, just had two days off? Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you too, Claire. Yeah. Someone, <laughs> someone asked me, one of our lovely volunteers, he's called Gorgeous Jack, actually, we really love him. Yeah. He's been coming since he was, like, literally in school. Yeah. yeah. Um, We really love him. But he said nice to me yesterday, he was like, have you been doing sunbeds? Like, you're very tanned. And I was like, no, it's it's literally probably just jaundice. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just it's spending time in this it's building exhausting. <laughs> yeah. under uh, flickery fluorescent lights. So yeah. for anyone that doesn't know, we are launching a new project. It's called Greenhouse. We officially mm-hmm. have our launch date, which is the 19th of next month. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are going to be doing all sorts of things for that. I don't know how much of that we're going to have released by the time we um, we release this podcast, but mm-hmm. we, we're just going to say it here. We have got a wonderful artist coming to um, cut our ribbon. Move over, Lord Mayor. Uh-huh. Um, sexy Tag is in town. Uh-huh. And we're also going to be hosting their gig when they are over in uh, the Black Box. Uh-huh. Um, so so we, we, we met years ago, um, probably not so sober, in a festival tent. And Tag was going, was doing the rounds because they were doing an electric picnic. And I'm um, asking people to come to their gig. And I mean, when we say not so sober, I mean, we were really not. We've actually told that story on the podcast, so we don't need to re-highlight that. Um, <laughs> but we went over to watch them and I Free swear. Right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they, uh, we went over to go and watch them. And they were just, we were actually in costume and we were sort of there to be sort of, you know, spectacles and dance and sort of, you're, you're much more in character in that space. Mm. But we just stopped. We were gobsmacked. Transfixed. Oh my God. So they are, we've described them as like a Freddie Mercury, Elton John and um, Lady Gaga. <laughs> Lady Gaga and all the big gay legends had some like crazy, beautiful Irish baby. Yeah. It's Tag. Yeah. Yeah. Tag is just like one of the most warm, special and talent. You know, one of those people that kind of like, on one hand, knows how talented they are. On the other hand, doesn't act like they know how talented they are, which yeah. is like a really lovely mix. Because I really do believe that people should know, as long as they don't be a dick about it. Not, do you like, know what I mean? not like Sean Wilson at the time. <laughs> yeah. Who's frankly unbearable. <laughs> you, got a, you got a new, um, what's it called? CD? It's not a CD. I sound like I'm about 50. <laughs> <laughs> new new CD. A, yeah. new, a new track. A new yeah. track. Called Paradise, which called... is wonderful. Yeah. Always linked below. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, it's kind of, um, it's getting embarrassing the amount that we talk about you, but... We've been playing it in this space, actually. It's been giving us Lovely. motivation. Do you know what actually is a signifier of how mad our lives are at the minute? Like, I wore a search party t-shirt for the episode with you, which was like, what, about eight weeks ago or something like that. It only just got washed and put over the line, <laughs> like, yesterday. That is wow. how bad our washing That's, pile has been. Oh, God. That we eventually got to the bottom of it. But I was like... Shaking it out, just being like, oh, great, I get to wear this again very soon. <laughs> so we're going to be having our lunch. We sort of confirmed that in the last couple of days because Tag's also offered 
us to come to the black box and host. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be in Phil Gate in Belfast uh, City Centre, which is um, very unusual for us because we're normally sort of uh, sort of festival, far away festival girlies. Yeah. Um, so we'll be doing that in our big disco ball dresses or maybe our weird tiger mm -hmm. print sort of madness. Um, but we're going to be hosting on stage for their night and it's going to be absolutely wonderful mm -hmm. we were Get hoping we'd sort of we'd floated the idea but i think now that sean was rather selfishly is having a bab um exactly um at the time whenever um we launch we'd sort of floated the idea of search party coming in um but what we're going to do is um is we should we should have a special gig we should have a yeah. something mm -hmm. some sort like of a launch gig. Uh, like a launch gig or a something, you know, we'll mm -hmm. celebrate something. What the hippie celebrate? Fucking midsummer or something. <laughs> you know, we'll all get it. We'll all get. I don't know what is mid. What is midsummer? Oh, like well, is we're it, only just in spring. Have you so. watched that um, the movie Midsummer? Is it a horror movie? Yeah. Oh, so maybe not it's that. <laughs> and like it's it's somewhere in Scandinavia, and like they're all in these like flowery dresses, but like the that. sacrifice people. Oh, so, uh, but, uh, except for sacrificing the people, we could have an effigy. Yeah. You know, we could do it like the the Masons do. We could have an effigy, except for sacrificing people. We could have the summer dresses. That'd be nice. Yeah. And they wear yeah. lovely flower crowns, don't yeah. they? So yeah. we'll we'll do that. We'll celebrate yeah. whatever that Norwegian uh, or Nordic festival is. Yeah. We will celebrate that because it's any excuse for a party. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we'll work that out. We actually seen your lovely day. We'll have um, a greenhouse garden party. Or yes. something like that, you know. Or a jungle, a jungle party, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know, we'll work on it. Search party, yeah. a search party, of course. A jungle oh my God. search. Okay, so the podcast is not for live thinking. Yeah, um, <laughs> especially now whenever we're like running on like lower energy brain cells at the yes. minute as well. A, a wee minute ago, there we should have like a page that just shows some love live. Out of context, yeah. Because like yes. you said, we saw your lovely day, and then like moved on. <laughs> yeah, so just have like, totally. like medical. Well, we did, we <laughs> did, yeah. Um, D should actually. So D is in your band uh -huh. and is a sweetie, and I, we also think. I think we said this before as well, but we think they're gorgeous. They should be a model. They're also mm -hmm. just so fucking sweet. Like we were there at Art Cetera Gallery last night. Yeah, because. Um, if anyone's been listening for for a while, they'll know that we're independent and uh, we are recently a fully registered charity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but to get this far, we have um, just relied on our community and, and, and relied on some of the relationships that we have. Olivier that runs um, Art Cetera has uh, made the decision to close that um, really iconic, beautiful space. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. so okay. he, he's going at the end of this month, actually. Mm -hmm. And we are, um, it's quite it's quite nice though, because a lot of the stuff that he was given uh, by other people or other galleries or other spaces through through the years, he's now given to us. Mm -hmm. So we've got mm -hmm. loads of chairs, mm -hmm. um, loads of glasses, all those wee vintage boys he's given yeah. us is, is iconic. Is that sign that sort of sits outside? Mm -hmm. What a lovely moment, you know. Mm -hmm. But we've seen D there when we were shoving stuff into the van and he was straight away just like, do you need any help? You know, mm -hmm. and whoever else was, a, was, was with him then, there was like a row of boys mm -hmm. ready to give us a hand. Yeah, it was very, very sweet. But um, one of the things that's lovely is like, Olivier is very much like Sharon is Karen, you know, so it's like pass on the love and that kind of helps with, I suppose the, there's a, there's a, there's a sadness, but there's also like a rebirth type thing that happens at the same time because Olivier has done an amazing job for many, many years and it's just like a complete stalwart of the of the art scene yeah. so we love him and wish him very well and whatever he's, he decides to do next he's known for being a good cunt mm -hmm. that's the thing and again it comes back to that i don't know if it was on the podcast that we were talking about this or maybe before but it's how it works it's like if you're a good person mm -hmm. if you have integrity if you work well with people mm -hmm. if you're kind and you lead with that and you lead with love then you'll be successful yeah uh -huh. you know but at the same time like hold your boundaries and it's like do no harm take no shit absolutely do you know like we've had uh, a few times over the last <laughs> couple of months and you know you learn as you go and things where we've had to hold boundaries and we've had to say no it's not good enough or no we're we can't do that you know because we um have other people to think about as well mm -hmm. you know and like we take the responsibility of what we're doing really seriously mm -hmm. but um you know well i suppose just talking about you know, what we've been up to the last couple of weeks as well and opening Greenhouse and what the next month looks like for us as well. Because it's just, it's mad to me that it's the end of March already. Uh -huh. And we are going to be opening our space in, uh, it'll be three weeks on we're, Monday. We're really far along. Yeah, and it, the place is unrecognisable. It is so gorgeous. There's mm -hmm. been so many artists 
in contributing their time and their energy. We've had uh, the absolutely gorgeous, uh, friend, you're one of your oldest friends, Felon, in mm -hmm. creating this beautiful sculpture. Uh, that Felon we're, Hardy. Yeah, we're not going to describe it too much more because we're waiting on how Felon wants to describe it. You know mm -hmm. how how it's going to be named and how he wants to to sort of uh, put that out to the world, but there it's, will be pictures coming. It is like groundbreakingly like magnificent, and it's like real. It, it's not that it's taking over our space; it melts perfectly, beautifully mm -hmm. into it. But it is magnificent. You so know, it's very, emerging from it. Yeah, you know, exactly. it looks like it's actually growing out of the ground. Yeah, it is. Bad. Yeah. It's really good. It's really cool. We've had uh, our lovely friend Carla, Carla Hodgins, oh, yes. who's been in creating gorgeous like jungle themes and leaves and things like that that are sort of bringing like the space all together mm -hmm. and sort of landing, leaning more into the greenhouse side of things. Uh, but also we've had our friend Chris Cotto, who's been in putting his amazing artwork uh, in our main atrium as well and on yeah. furniture and things like that, which has just added this like uh, it's it's like this perfect blend. Connor has has had always had dreams of there being like graffiti everywhere and, you know, looking really, really urban. I'm and... so happy that I've sort of got my way yeah. for once. Yeah. Very rarely <laughs> happens. Okay. Yes. Um, but, but it was it's... the perfect articulation of what we both wanted, you know, which is like. I love graffiti. I love it. I kind of hate shit tags that just ruin beautiful old buildings. I love them. But I love good tags whenever there's loads of them and it just adds to the sort of the culture of a place. I love that. But at the same time, I wanted to make sure that the place looks professional and welcoming and inclusive. And that means inclusive where people maybe might see loads and loads of graffiti and find that to be like a bit scary type uh -huh. thing or like they might feel like it's not for them. But the way that it's been managed and curated by Connor um, has meant that taking multiple artists and smashing them all in together where they have a lot of freedom to kind of do what they want, but it's based on how we perceive like the bits that we want to use and all the rest of it. And it has just been perfect, mm -hmm. like absolutely perfect. Like I, we're, it, it satisfied what both of our visions were. In terms of and being like, so. and oh, completely exploded both of them out. Like yeah. whenever we know that like our staff, our volunteers, like our, our gorgeous Beth took last weekend off. It was the first holiday she'd taken since Christmas and even before that and uh, wanted a day off and we made her take the whole weekend off so that she could actually rest because she works her butt off whenever she comes in. And she had like the biggest FOMO ever from having to take time off. I think she was kind of like, don't do anything without me, <laughs> you know. I, uh, I kind of forgot what she did not forgot not that you don't appreciate but you kind of just you, you get um, used to it you get used to um someone's role and what they're doing so beth comes in she's working part-time she's also studying at the um university of ulster university of ulster School of Art. and she's very talented in terms of drawing and fabric and all the rest of it so she's a, she's an exceptional person already but um you forget kind of what she brings almost because she's just part of the fabric of what we do but um oh my god like i, I had a weekend of just dying like our volunteers are wonderful but we and uh we're very grateful for them to co uh, sort of coming and spending their time um but we do attract um a lot of neurodiverse people we have a lot of um we would say weirdos and queerdos it makes you really appreciate um sort of the work that the people around you put in yeah especially our staff including well, Beth who's part-time and then also Aoife and the lovely Gronya. yeah it's one of the things that happens so whenever people are in just for a day you know and they're like right I want to come in I want to work really hard and do loads of things and Beth has done this amazing job that uh means that she understands all of the tasks that need to be done and then she farms them out and says right do this next do this next yeah. and that's really quite a stressful role to take on one that we took on an awful lot and other uh, more senior volunteers did as well for us over the over the years but whenever we had to step back into that space again and I say we I mean you yeah. like I'm sort of upstairs in the office doing spreadsheets it it really helps you to realize the value of all of that happening yeah in short it's been a lot of work we but we're almost finished our ground floor mm -hmm. we're really getting there in the middle floor at the top floor we're ignoring for now but we do have um, a, lo a, a load of lovely people coming in from the probation board uh -huh. and they're going to be helping us so we're going to be working with them to do some bits at the front of the building and then also to paint up the stairs and just move things and really like get our shit together we can now see a light at the end of the tunnel uh -huh. whereas you sort of when you enter the tunnel you um it, you have to trust that yeah that will come we've had loads of wins though you didn't it's sort of you know you know when people on um 
on like a home makeover show get excited about finding a floor yeah and i'm like really like is that your life right now yeah like, is that really what and we're excited about and then it happened and i was like oh, have you seen this like, and then we painted <laughs> the concrete and we're like shut up yeah. we are like some rad gallery space yeah lifting like manky stinking carpet tiles oh my god if i never see another carpet tile as long as i live i will be so happy burn them but lifting the stinking carpet tiles which also had the benefit of changing the smell and the air and everything in the mm. space just everything got really fresh really quick but lifting it to discover a painted concrete floor below that we could then just continue out and carry on upstairs mm -hmm. as well was just like amazing i've got to say as well like you know now we've had Aoife in with us for a full month as well and my god that woman is a machine yeah like in the most amazing has just the most amazing energy has just come in and just makes everything seem very effortless but does things to this like ridiculously high standard and she's she has this gorgeous thing saying like becky i have no chill but is yet at the same time the most chilled person i've ever met in my entire life it is just the most she just brings the most perfect energy in she's working honest. with us to absolute head cases yeah you know in how we work the standard that we work to the pace that we work at it's kind of a difficult thing to come in and interact with and my god she has done just absolutely amazingly <sighs> So things we'll be doing in the spaces, we're going to be having the lunch on the 19th and then we uh, have loads of plans over the summer. So we've mm -hmm. got special fashion events and great like uh, themes for parties. We're going to be uh, doing all sorts of things. And mm -hmm. um, we're also going to be welcoming the public from the Monday following that the 19th to so the 22nd. And we are going to be uh, also welcoming in our first crop of artists and anyone that wants to get involved upstairs um, mm -hmm. and uh, wants to apply to do that. Right now, our expressions of interest form is still open. So yep. you can um, you can let us know, you can give us your details and then you can be um, updated and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But come along. We're going to also have probably that week. Um, again, all of this isn't isn't exactly set yet, but that week we're going to have open day, so mm -hmm. you can come and have a nosy around the space, see what the crack is, see if you fit in with us. Mm -hmm. But really, the way to to work that out and to work out if we are for you is to um, come volunteer, give some of your time. You know? It's also to um, if you've sent in an expression of interest or you're thinking about doing it, please do it. You know, there's no commitment to it, and what it'll mean is it puts you into a pool where in the next week we we've already done run a few of the sessions and they've been amazing so far where we will uh send you an invite to a session where you can come along you can look at our floor plans we can talk about our pricing and stuff like that and we'll tell you a wee bit about how we ex we want the place to run so they've been really really informative and really enjoyable so far um but we want more people to come along and and feed into the process you yes, know so we're very lucky because we've had loads of interest so far so Long may that last. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that we've been doing over the last while um, and another announcement that we have to make is that this is our last podcast in this space. Mm -hmm. Um, which... the, uh, probably the last ever podcast in this Oh, space. is it? Yeah. Oh, oh, of course. Because so. we're everybody else's sets are away. We're currently yeah. sitting in sort of a bit of an empty room. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a bit scary. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, we are. Um, okay, yeah, I think we're just about to move. We're going to try to move our walls. We're going to try to yeah. actually move the set. Yeah. Um, over to over to greenhouse now. It's going to change for the for for the sort of new look, and we're going to mm -hmm. take a few weeks in order to do that. So mm -hmm. if we go missing off the airways for that time, it's only a couple of weeks. Um, do not we'll panic, or soon. do not be maybe too relieved. Um, <laughs> we will be back, and uh, it's, it's sort of like a you know like a listed building at this point. That yeah. said, this yeah, yeah. very much so. It's, um, no, like in New York when. Uh, <laughs> Alexander Hamilton's house had to be like moved brick by brick yeah, yeah and brick repositioned brick to put it it's, in a new place it's yeah. basically that what we're gonna maybe do is have it so we'll take it and we'll keep it obviously but um, we have been in talks with the Ulster Museum for years about uh, uh, taking some of our stuff from stencils to all yeah. sorts of bits and it's mad that like the child in me Think it's, thinks it's the craziest thing ever that we're like too busy to really seriously engage in that conversation. We'll get round to, we'll put stuff in the drawers and it'll be such an honour. Mm -hmm. But we want to do it right as well. We think what, um, now they're not, they're probably not going to take a full set, to be honest. But we do <laughs> think, you know, if we get to episode 40, possibly they'll be banging our door down. <laughs> it'll be, you'll be raging you give us it because it'll be worth a fortune. <laughs> um, but until then, maybe we could do meet and greets. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we could have like a RuPaul's Drag Race experience yeah. uh -huh. where you, it's be, it's um it shows some love live um mm -hmm. con 
mm-hmm. and uh, a RuPaul's Drag Con experience. Um, but it shows some Love, Love Live Con, which is basically just one set. <laughs> and um, a merch stand. Yeah. A sort of us at a merch stand. Hello, it's yeah. like 50 quid a t-shirt. And then you get to touch us for five seconds. <laughs> um, just us very tired. Yeah. You know, and people will people will give us our iconic lines. Yeah. Um, and then maybe Bruno Diamond could do a guest spot. Yeah. You know, and everyone could boo her for not listening. <laughs> but I suppose that's the thing as well, is that like um, what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks is we're going to share more clips of, you know, because we have so much bloody content. And we're very aware that like we also are only two people in terms of like the social media side of things. Yeah. And uh there's loads more that we're going to share over the next couple of weeks. And we want to give also people a bit of a chance to kind of catch up. Uh, even the people sort of nearest and dearest to us sometimes are like, oh, I'm on episode 17. I'm nearly caught up, but you know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but we're the same, like some of our favorite podcasts. Like sometimes it takes for you to have a week off or something like that. Or you've got a, like a like a DIY job to do where you can just stick on a podcast and give it a listen. Like that's the story for us with Blind Boy. Like one of our, our favorite ones, you know, so it'll be uh, nice to do that. I'm I'm sorry for any, for anyone watching on YouTube. I'm kind of doing this thing in between speaking, of just you're speaking, and normally I have this thing where I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah, because we're live, <laughs> active and, listening, <laughs> yeah, and we're on camera. But I have just been sort of paring down <laughs> and sitting, like, so uh, no, I'm not having a breakdown. I'm not on drugs for once. Um, I'm just, and we are just extremely tired. But yes, yeah, so this will be the last time that we record in this space, and it's mm-hmm. quite emotional because. Um, it's been such a, it's been so, I'm so emotional today because I'm so, so tired, but it has been such a really special journey for us, mm-hmm. Sean. Like it's been mm-hmm. such a pleasure. And you've been like the biggest part of that. Oh my God. Like, like so much so. This. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Good. Mm. Well. I'm so glad it's over now. Do you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fuck for that. <laughs> no, do you know what? One of the things that I wanted to do, and I didn't sort of prep you on this in advance because I wanted it to be like a bit of a surprise, but I wanted to, uh, ask both of you and I'll do the same thing again is uh just in terms of and I think this is a really good thing for people to kind of maybe get in the habit of especially whenever you're tired times are tough you've had a bit of a shitty few days or whatever so one of the best things that you can do is practice gratitude Mm -hmm. and so I wanted to ask you both like tell me what you're grateful for right now today um you go first Sean I'm grateful for Nicole yeah and my friends and family. Mm-hmm. That's always like the first things. Grateful mm-hmm. for the cats. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm grateful uh, to be relatively healthy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm grateful to be um, able to eat regularly and pay bills. Yes. Um, and I'm grateful that I get to um, sort of manifest my own destiny with like business yeah and um and i'm grateful that i get to make art and and mm-hmm. and play music and gig every weekend and mm-hmm. have a bit of a laugh and grateful for all of it great oh, you're oh. Sweet, eh? and you know what and you you did all of that you know with your choices with the courage that you show in like having your own life and making those choices and all the rest of it so i hope this um i hope it doesn't change uh moving sets and moving to the new place i don't think it will because there's something about like there's a real escape about coming here for us yeah Yeah. that we sort of like exit our mental lives Mm -hmm. and uh, come and tell everyone about them (laughs) basically (laughs) yeah but it's so like so this room is like um or was at least filled with many sets mm-hmm. and lots of bits everywhere it just there's something it's like a wee oasis yeah but that's sean is the oasis yeah you're the it's actually the the room is just a, a vehicle for that if you know what i mean you're it's actually the space that you hold whatever room you're in you know it's like people say like a home is not a four walls and a roof although that's helpful yeah. it's actually the people that you share it with or yeah. it's maybe just like whether if you live by yourself that can also just be like it's your oasis it's your place yeah. it's the place where you get to be by yourself and, and i'm actually i'm so grateful for this space too um like it's emotional this is the last day but you know me and luke have been here two and a half years mm-hmm. and um like it's just it was just a blank canvas to begin with and it's just filled up with things that have happened and all the connections and all the memories and experiences that have happened over the last two and a half years. And hopefully like, you know, but 
the new space will and I'm moving down the greenhouse and, and all the other places mm-hmm. how all the podcasts yeah. have moved to like uh, we'll have more um experiences but it's just like there was nothing here like uh-huh. yeah th- see the the first week we, we moved in here we like lifted those like window frames mm-hmm. and um, my man gave me those like two bits of like fabric mm-hmm. and we had two chairs and a couple of mics yeah, you know, yeah. and a camera like from little so, things big things yeah grow. and you, you could hear like all the like you can't hear it really now because there's still a few curtains and stuff up but the first like episode of like mud blood that we uh-huh. recorded in here it was like you could just hear all the reflections and the echoes you know because there's yeah. fuck all in the room yeah um i've been coming to a smell from i was like 13 14 so yeah. we're in blackstaff mill right now yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. we're in blackstaff mill and um and as much as like i have me and luke have been like gone glad to be getting out of this place and like you know and, and it's saying, bittersweet it is very bittersweet because like it m- means so much to me that like we've been in here like and mm-hmm. their place like this mill means so much because it's like such a a creative es- escape mm-hmm. for yeah. so many artists and that's um, a real privilege as well it, it's, to have it's that. amazing like um w- like there was n- nothing else like it when we were growing up and to be able to come down and just make as much fucking noise as possible mm-hmm. until it started to sound good yeah you know? yes um so like very grateful for this mill and everything it's given me and then to be a part of it yeah for a short period of time relatively short period of time yeah yeah it's been very special like tell tell us this where, where are you moving again up to the innovation factory yes, yes. very cool Sounds gorgeous up there mm-hmm. it's really nice you're not going to know yourself i know no, are you corporate are you corporate now yeah. I, i'm corporate so that's like it, you're a big big guy corporate you sold out <laughs> I, I, so, that's how they've started to refer to me yeah. in work now is like corporate says <laughs> and I, I think did you start that actually I yeah. think you oh it was you it yeah. was you yeah. that fucking stuck you bastard yeah. <laughs> I, still, I, I said I was, I was going to change your nickname on like my phone to corporate yes yeah. well that's stuck <laughs> that's stuck how the hell did that happen yeah well what about you Connor what are you grateful oh, for I uh, oh, I'm so I, I love these therapy sessions I just <laughs> love them so much. Um, so I am it's, um, um, it's just a Furby session with a camera. That's yeah, all we're doing. That's yeah. good though. It's good, you know. Um, I am really I'm just I think recently we've worked with a load of people um that haven't quite got it and haven't quite got all the pieces or the team or the bits together. And it's reminded me of the fact that we really do and that we have the it's freedom. It's not perfect. It's gone. It's, it, it's so shit, far from perfect. Ever is. But it's reminded me, even just in terms of like other organizations, in terms of space, mm-hmm. you know, um, that we now have all of this space that volunteers that are coming to us that have been coming for years or maybe coming to Greenhouse for the first time. And they're like, holy fuck, like what is happening? Mm-hmm. You went from your wee wine tavern street store to uh, and and the warehouse space over West Belfast, which we say warehouse, but we what we mean is garage. Well, it like, was, yeah, eight hundred square foot ground floor and top floor. But now, and we're not we're not like in the Empire State Building by any means, but like four hundred or four thousand square feet is a lot of space. Funny, yeah. as soon as we moved in, we were like, "Go, we could really do with a wee bit more space." I know. <laughs> um, but to have the opportunity to have that, to have the opportunity because of this uh, recent funding from Belfast City Council to hire new staff to be able to get ourselves to a place where we can record the podcast and we can afford to do that and we can do it regularly mm-hmm. to uh, be able to hire Beth, which mm-hmm. was the big moment for us mm-hmm. to keep a sort of t- like I think even a couple of years back where we just didn't have uh really anyone that regular around us mm-hmm. now we've got this real bunch like the first event is an event but the first sort of a get together in the space was like a volunteer party that we had last week and just sort of sitting for a wee second and looking around it's being I'm really grateful for them mm-hmm. and people who choose to um give us their free time who give us the free time mm-hmm. and trust us to um to sort of be that community that maybe they're seeking to be that family that maybe they don't have or they don't mm-hmm. have a great relationship with. I I am also that person. You know, I sort of have to remind myself that I'm not just um, a, a show some love, Connor. Mm-hmm. You know, that I'm actually a, a, a person. And um, uh, I'm really grateful to uh, just sort of be, be in that space. Like, even just standing in our space, and looking at all of the stuff that we have, mm-hmm. all of the shit and the stories and saving it for years and having to climb climb over, over it in our house because we're like, well, we can't really say no to the sofa, but we can only really put it in our hall. 
Um, because we know at some stage we're going to have a space. I'm worried that the dog's going to hurt himself because he's trying to climb over it to get a drink of water. Like it's been, <laughs> it's been such a fucking journey. Like we looked. I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast yet, but we looked the other day, and we had like a couple of hundred quid, and I was just like, wow, like we've got a couple of hundred quid, um, which is really big because money is a is. This has been such a difficult journey in terms of all of that, um. We could have just entered into this space and applied for a load of fucking funding, sold out like you just have, and, <laughs> um, and just and started. I don't know, sucking the national lottery's deck now. And and in fairness, we actually do that right now. They're they're great funders of us, and we're very grateful for their money. Good but dick. you know, uh, mm -hmm. it's good dick. Yeah, they're really good to work with. <laughs> they are really yeah. good to work with. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, but it's just it's not the only thing. No, you know, we, we look at it differently as a source of growth. That we could have bent our, you know, um, uh, uh, bent and molded ourselves into something that we that doesn't really fit our morals or our ideals. Yeah. That we could have uh, chosen to work with people that we didn't really necessarily want to, um, but we thought we had to for whatever reason. I love that now we can just make that decision, you know, mm -hmm. that when shit hits the fan, which it inevitably does with, um, you know, things that you're working on, some things are very successful, some things aren't, that we can just go, okay, then, bye. That's mm -hmm. grand. Mm -hmm. We can just we can work on the next thing, and that we just have so many opportunities that people are um, that are people are willing to work with us. Even people like Tag, you know. Mm -hmm. So that night, so the, the day that we launch that night, we're going like where we're sending a host. The fact that they're like, I know I trust just you know, I your grand. You get on stage, you host it, and sure, we'll just sort of see what happens. You will be good. That is unimaginable. Huge, huge you know, mm -hmm. even the fact that we have the trust in ourselves now to sit on the podcast and just say whatever we want. And sometimes it's a wee bit spicy and we get a wee bit of, a wee bit waves of um, mad, turfy, mm. racist, xenophobic yeah. and everything else feedback. Me with my non-binary hair. But all, <laughs> but also sometimes, um, not sometimes, all, like loads of times we get people that send us messages that say, that really helped me. We have volunteers mm. that have joined us to say, I did people that, that travel halfway across the country to come and spend their time with us because they're like, that really inspired me. I watched that. It's actually the one episode that we've never watched back really. Which was one that one speaking about Amanda's article and mm -hmm. uh, all of um, all of that kind of experience, but people that are like I've I've listened to that and that really helped me and it really helped to form my thoughts and really helped to sort of keep me uh, seeing. Um, and then in the middle of all of that, it's it's was it's having you, you know, it's having a, a, our family and our and our pets and our house and all of our wee stupid bits um, and being able to create together in the way that we create, being able to be together in the way that we're together um, is magic, you know. Um, and uh, I think it's all, I think the thing that I'm most grateful for is that at the beginning of all of, all of this, it was really very unbelievable. Um, and we really struggle sometimes to have the belief because it was just like, fuck, are we, are we, at, like I was mental, but like, are we actually mental? Are we doing, like, are you actually having a breakdown? Mm -hmm. Am I actually just not going to be here anymore? Like, is, is this crazy? Like, is this, uh, is, is this the wrong path? But I, I feel like over the last couple of months, it's really felt like it is the right path. And watching back on podcasts and conversations that we have and bits that we've been doing are just taking a wee second at like um, some fancy like event that's full of fucking suits. Like some of the most powerful people in the country that are just like dying for like a selfie or whatever, just to somehow look relevant to their daughter or something. Um, I'm like, God, what? Like we... We are actually on this guest list. Like, we are, we're like these canopy people now. We're also on the very far end of that, you know, like sniffing our reduced milk. Um, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I am, I'm so grateful for that. And it's really important to be grateful because um, mm -hmm. you can kind of just let it eat you up. And then mm -hmm. just, if you, if you kind of believe it and you believe in the hype, often that's where it comes apart. But I, um, as much as I can, just sort of go, yeah. Like having people like Coda come in, having mm -hmm. artists that have been here the last uh, couple of weeks, people um, like Fallon as well, um, just to um, just to have that trust and to have really shit hot people around us that are like, yeah, I'll give you time. Yeah, I'll do that. You know, we'll work that out. You know, talking about sound and light and doing events and stuff in the future. The fact that you're like, yeah, we'll work that out. We'll do a thing. Um, I don't know, whatever else it is. Um, it's it's um, it's having that opportunity, you know, when you speak to those new staff members and they're like, how do we make this happen? And we're like, I go, well, no such and such that does rugs and such and such is your man that does this thing. Mm -hmm. Your man here does our electrics and then whatever it is, you know, it's mm -hmm. just all of those conversations over the years. And again, it comes back to that same central theme of having integrity, telling the fucking truth, uh, working um, to the best of your ability and, and, and showing some love, like being fucking kind to people around you, you know, we're trying to do that. At least being accountable if you, if you forget yourself, because 
we, we all do. We say this. We've said this before as well. You know, we're not. Um, I was actually speaking to Bruno on that podcast. She was like, you know, talking about being nice people and sort of inspirational and whatever else that makes us feel so dreadfully awkward. And actually, <laughs> it's an active thing. We all have a cunt inside of us. Mm -hmm. You know, and we all have that little bastard that just wants to fucking burn everything down because the world is fucked and it's very difficult and it's very hard. And we're all fucking traumatized. We're from a country that has been royally fucked for the last not even 100 years, 800 years, you know. But we um, if we can do the work and um, and, and, and work through that, there's there is light and there's real beauty there, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never coming back to this therapy session. It's far too emotional. You're going to get me back on the fucking drugs. <laughs> I spent a lot of this week actually just being like, God, you know what I'd love? Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, I'd love a wee strip of Diazis or I'd love a insert whatever else is going to yeah. make me top myself. But it's good See, to... Um, you, you mentioned like the turfs and everything else. Like I know um, last podcast went out, like it was like a few people had abject opinions yeah. on like the clips that went out like so have you been dealing with that uh preferably it's it sometimes can be hard to read but at the same time like you know Brene Brown talks about a quote from uh is it Ro Theodore Roosevelt yeah yeah and it's about being in the arena you know it's like uh the people in the cheap seats will comment and the people that are not necessarily doing anything with with their with their uh, privilege and with what they're given in terms of growing up in this country uh, or, you know, growing up in a Western uh, civilization where they have got food and they have got running water and all the rest of it, and all of the gifts and the privileges that we have yeah. that isn't about having loads of money because that's not what privilege necessarily is. But uh, we have trained ourselves hard although it is hard to read some of that shit we've also trained ourselves to be fairly resistant to it or resilient towards it mm -hmm. is probably a better way to say it because um you know whenever people are insulting how you look and we're all we've been having like a full gag this week in work Aoife is was wetting herself over my non-binary hair as somebody said you know or how like people think that like somehow we misunderstand the problem or that we're like just angry and all the rest of it and actually that's kind of the opposite of it you know in truth and in understanding a lot of these things in a as much as we can as much as we can without being particular academics but just in reading and listening and observing and things like that like people insult how you look and they insult out of fear and out of not wanting to accept the truth of some of these very hard truths to accept. And uh, people often feel very affronted by that. So they just attack, you know. And yes, whilst it's hard to read, it's also uh, knowing at the same time how important it is because the people that are commenting to say, yes, thank you for saying that, are the ones that we can see do understand. And then not just because we're like, oh, well, you're agreeing with me, so therefore you're right. No, people that we know that are commenting, that are in that world, that actually do understand these things in a fairly day in, day out, complex way, can see that sometimes it's just about having the courage to just speak honestly. And that's one thing that I made a personal agreement with myself many years ago. And it's something that we hold very, very dear and we've talked about it on the podcast before but it's about radical honesty and radical candor you know that even if that message is uncomfortable to hear and even if that conversation is difficult to have we're still going to have it because our deepest relationship is with the truth you know and that sometimes means that we'll get a whole load of shit for it but I'm kind of okay with that you know I'm, 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 it's the only thing I can be okay with my mantra in all of it is just like it's our job it's our yeah. job it's our job it's our job yeah like, it has there's a greater good to it mm -hmm. and i would one thing i would say about the clip that we released um was that one it has to be a minute yeah so like it doesn't have to be it can be up to three minutes on instagram and all the rest but we're just not getting the traction mm -hmm. and actually as it turned out we got the traction um but it has to be a minute and then in hindsight we did cover um um abortion religion uh homophobia gender normativity gender normativity um, local politics, um, 
people of color and whatever else it was. We basically we we met the whole checklist mm -hmm. for things that far right nutters uh, generally are triggered by. Yeah. And uh, we, they were they were triggered. Now, for all that I'm not here listening to turfs or racists or people that are are nutters um, and are wrong um, and uh, are out there on their keyboards typing their hate speech. Um, I am here to listen to the kind of reasonable perspective of people who um, maybe are religious and have, you know, have been able to engage in a conversation, not in the comments because you, you're just going to get murdered by someone, but uh, in private messages just mm -hmm. to say, oh, I never thought about it from that perspective. This is my perspective to mm -hmm. which we can say, well, actually, this is ours. Here is the full clip. In fact, listen to the podcast. And mm -hmm. then the feedback is, oh, I did. I see it with context. Mm -hmm. I think the one... Um, the one thing for us to learn is that um, or one of the things that I want to take away from it is to um, is to really think about that context, because I think it is quite important. And in fairness, I clipped the I clipped it up. It was what you were saying, but I clipped it up and a few of the bits were rearranged just to fit. Yeah. And uh, we did remove the context. You actually straight away after that were very good at saying Yes, but if you can think about it from another person's perspective, there could be someone who is Christian, for example, and they believe themselves to be feminist. And we had a good conversation around that. Um, it's just sort of, it's the, it's the way of the world, though, isn't it? You know, you need to, um, it, uh, the algorithm, we sort of work for the algorithm in that, in that aspect, mm -hmm. and you need to create um, content that, that makes an impression. I do think there, overall, we talk about doing more harm than good. I think we definitely did... Um, a lot of good in terms of um, our mission, the people that we want to attract, the people that were just waiting and holding their breath, maybe for their whole life, just to go, ha, huh, yes, that was my experience of that. You know, mm -hmm. um, I think to speak in absolutes is always um, a risky business. And mm -hmm. I did sort of serve that up to you mm -hmm. um, just to kind But of, I'm always going to speak the truth and yeah. I don't take back a word of what oh, I said. Do you know, the, like that's, that's really important to say. Yeah, that's also, that's one of the things as well. The whole way through it, I was re-listening and re-watching and sort of working it out and then reading the comment and then reacting to that. You're much better at sort of just processing it. I'm not like, I it really, it does get me. And uh, every time that I watch it, I was like, oh, I, I really agree with that. That's really what yeah. I think. I think, you know, there's a lot of in and around it. There was a lot of conversation about kind of freedom of expression and religion and all that sort of stuff. We're also free to express ourselves. And as queer people living in a um, in a society that's been torn apart by religion or apparently so and uh, living in a misogynistic uh, world, uh, we have a right to say that's not OK, yeah. you know. But I would say that um, how I choose to communicate, I wouldn't necessarily choose to give a quick fire answer in that yeah. respect either you know i don't really like to not necessarily i don't like to speak in absolutes although i may believe in absolute i always like to give context around each thing so i can understand how people might like but at the same time there's loads of people saying oh why what's wrong with the sdlp and it's like because they are a an anti-choice party traditionally although recently there has been some moves around mm -hmm. conscious voting and things like that but you sort of do remove a bit of the opportunity to break each one down and say why that is mm -hmm. and i suppose that would be a good learning from it but um but at the same time like i just think that it's really important that we do be honest and we do like uh choose to um Say it out loud, you know, that actually there's a lot of people that will choose to not necessarily sit on the fence, but they'll choose to pick bits of things that suit them, mm -hmm. you know, and then feel very uncomfortable with the fact that um, actually uh, there's a bit of there is hypocrisy within that, you know, mm -hmm. and it is an uncomfortable thing then to see that laid like a mirror held up to that and go, no, that mm -hmm. doesn't actually work because a lot of people were saying, oh, well, you know, the beautiful thing about Christianity or what, and I focus on Christianity because it's the one that we know the best, mm -hmm. but there's people that will be like, oh, but the beautiful thing about that is you can't pick and you can't choose. And it's like, no, you can't. You, 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 you as a personal me. individual can do what you want, but you must understand that that is not how they wish to have that perceived. You can't do not. what you want. No. That's just absolutely false. But you can choose to hold a faith. You yes. can choose in that respect, but it's then understanding that that means that you're absenting yourself or you're choosing not to go along with what that church or that congregation mm -hmm. says. And that is a different thing. And it's just having the, sometimes people don't have the courage 
to be able to accept that and that is what makes it uncomfortable you the know? thing that we've talked about a lot like on loads of podcasts is that there's a different like we would we would describe ourselves as spiritual we would say that we have faith but there is you know, whereas we might say the universe other people might say god there is a fundamental separation and difference between faith and organized religion yeah. faith incredible for society all the stories that go alongside mm. it incredibly affirming and uh, empowering organized religion a cancer that's caused fucking so much harm in this world more than any other any other sort force. of entity or force that we experience mm -hmm. it is dangerous uh -huh. faith beautiful organized religion toxic toxic stuff mm -hmm. you know and mostly the source of wars as, yeah but as we, what we were saying too mostly ran by men who will not relinquish power and uh mostly uh from a space of of judgment although that's kind of one of the first rules it's a literal like documented tool of capitalism you know yeah. like it's going back to looking at what was happening in the states now i don't want to butcher these facts too much but it's looking at things like the war on drugs like religious leaders were brought together to add weight to uh homophobic principles mm -hmm. and uh anti-drugs principles and that was then put on anti-women principles in terms of mm -hmm. abortion and things like that it's literally like in a very coercive way being designed to do that mm -hmm. you know it's a force of control mm -hmm. and it keeps people controlled from a moral perspective and the minute people say oh i'm going to be liberated from that and i'm going to just like follow whatever i see faith as in my own way that's a harmful thing that's a scary thing that's why people get ostracized from communities yes. and they're scared of that you know but it's about having something that's other than that it's about having community for community's sake yeah you know but more churches less god yeah that's what we would say yeah, yeah that's basically what we think mm -hmm. <laughs> but you um, know what i'm gonna do is um because i'm aware that we're uh Racing all a wee bit in terms of our time. I'm going to say what I'm grateful for. Well, I was going to finish off the episode with it, but sure, you just steal my thunder. <laughs> so, Becky, um, so just, um, that's very interesting what we're saying about God um, and uh, world religions. We'll look forward to those comments. Um, but just to finish off the episode today. <laughs> um, I mean, all that is. It's like, yeah. si it's like sitting with fucking Bruno Diamond here. Um, but just to finish off the episode today. You know, we were wondering, weren't we, Sean? We were wondering yeah. what you're grateful for. <laughs> Ooh, fuck all. I'm an ungrateful bitch. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, well, it's, it is the hardest thing to do whenever uh, you two have just articulated so beautifully you what you're grateful ones. for. You did take the good ones, so I have to pick shit ones. No, but basically like kind of in a similar way to what you guys said, you know, friends and family, the work uh, that we're doing, the opportunities that we have within that. I'm grateful for... Um, our lives, our home, our we animals, you know, our, uh, the structure that we're trying to create for ourselves now as well. And um, the trust that people have shown in us, yeah. you know, shout out to, you know, Erica, John, Sarah and team at Belfast at Marbeth. Oh, I'm not even going to try and name all of them. Uh, we, we are very grateful Sarah. to all of you. Yeah, I said Sarah. Oh. <laughs> that was what I remember. I'm Bruna. Also Sarah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you should but no, we're, we're very, very grateful to that team for trusting in us and trusting in our mad idea, which we're making a real reality now in a really beautiful way. But I think the thing, you know, obviously the thing I'm most grateful for out of anything in the world is you. Thank I'm you. I was two seconds from walking off. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky I gave you five minutes. <laughs> but um, but I think one of the things that I'm uh, within that is that I'm grateful for how much we trust each other. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for how much we're learning to trust our instincts better. And uh, for the patience that we're kind of showing each other because we could not do this if we didn't especially with how nuts we both are in our own very different ways but the fact that we have carved out this way of trusting each other to kind of like let each other take the lead in different areas and things yeah. like that and how that is now manifesting itself out within our team thank fuck the, that's working yeah and for the trust that they're showing in us you know like um uh Aoife, Gronya and Beth and the rest of our volunteer team are just like these amazing special people that we have around us that have uh, given us a section of their lives to be able to believe in what we're doing and trust us to come and be a part of our team and help us deliver this amazing project. But I think trusting our instincts, the more that we do that, and that's like a, you know, please a message out to everybody, trust your gut. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The more you can lean into trusting your gut, the more that you can lean into 
uh, that little quietness. You know, there's an amazing book called Untamed by Glennon Doyle, mm -hmm. who describes that feeling of intuition really, really well. Like I hate it whenever people say female intuition. It's bullshit. We all have it. You know, like everybody has a gut feeling. Everybody knows whenever something is <clears throat> inherently right or not. And it's not about an excitement. It's about a quietening. It's about whenever your soul feels at peace with a decision. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're just like, that's it. I know that that's, it's maybe not exactly it, but it's the direction to mm -hmm. take, you know, and it's about asking for advice, but also then not always taking it, you know, like people will uh, give you their thoughts and their opinions and things like that. But ultimately the decision has to come down to you yeah. and what you know, because you're the only person that knows your own experience or your collective experience. So, um, so yeah, oh, I'm, I think just like the practice of, especially after a hard few days, or hard week or life or whatever, the practice <laughs> of sitting down saying, what am I grateful for? Is actually like, can be tough, <clears throat> but it's also like a really kind of nice cathartic, where are we now experience. Yeah. So I'm really glad to have done that today. I'm grateful for that. If, but it, we're grateful for the the time to be here yeah. and the, the, um, the space to create in our soon to be gone set. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yes, we will. We will not be. Uh, will not be gone for long. Only be for a couple of weeks. Whenever Sean is back in the back in the world, um, baby is born. Uh, everybody's happy, and uh, we have got our space open. So next time you're talking to us, it'll be from our new space. Can we get the first interview with your mm -hmm. baby? Yeah. Have you already signed it, or <laughs> will yeah, it be like, uh, sort of like a People <laughs> magazine exclusive? Yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> or like our first interview, our, our first photo shoot with the baby. Yeah. Yes. Totally. So, Gorgeous. Perfect. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. That's a show some love exclusive. Yeah. You get all the best bits here and show some love live. <laughs> um, do yourself a favor over the next while and listen back uh -huh. um, to all of the previous bits because we have talked to so many wonderful people. Now mm -hmm. we've got loads of guests booked for our second round. Yeah. I don't know if we're calling it a second season. But um, we've got loads coming up, but we've had loads of people so far. So go on, listen, see what the crack is, because mm -hmm. um, it is awfully, awfully fun. Yeah, we've really enjoyed uh, doing a wee bit of reflection ourselves. So yes, keep uh, keep on our social media. There'll be more clips coming, nice wee reminders. Make sure to download Paradise from Search Party. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye out for gigs and things like that. And uh, thank you all for watching. Keep you for staying with us this far. And we will be back very, very soon. <laughs> Thanks so much. Show some love. <laughs> I can barely get that out. <laughs>